Hey guys, how you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because it's 2020 and I have an original iPhone here with me. This thing came out almost 13 years ago. But recently, Apple blessed us with the iPhone 11 Pro with its beefy camera system. And it got me thinking, how does the camera system on here stack up to the original camera system they shipped with the OG iPhone in 2007? So there's only one way to find out, right? Let's take some pictures. Before we get in depth, here's a few sample photos I shot. I'll admit, the original iPhone held up a little better than I thought it would. My main issue was focusing on close-ups, but we'll revisit that topic later. Another stark contrast, no pun intended, was the difference in dynamic range, and we'll revisit this later too. Here's a quick rundown of the specs. The first gen iPhone has a single 2 megapixel camera and a 3.5 inch screen with a 320 by 480 resolution. The iPhone 11 Pro has four cameras, three of which are on the back. The cameras have varying focal lengths and each uses a 12 megapixel sensor. The iPhone 11 Pro boasts a 5.8 inch OLED Super Retina XDR display with a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio and a 2436 by 1125 resolution. So just from rattling off the specs, it seems like the iPhone 11 Pro is just gonna smoke the original iPhone, right? But like I've said before, it's not about the tools you use, it's about how you use the tools. So you can still get great pictures with the OG iPhone. But let's look at some more comparisons and see what the similarities and differences are. But also we'll take a look at some of the nuances that come along with using an older phone. One big feature I missed while using the original iPhone right away was the tap to focus feature. It's something we use without even thinking about it today, but I completely forgot this feature doesn't even exist in this device. I had to rely completely on the fix focus. Yeah, there was no autofocus either. Ah, very humble beginnings. You also can't use the volume button to take a picture, which is a handy shortcut we enjoy today. Another thing I forgot about is how minimalist the old camera app was. There's no manual controls, there's no grids, there's no filters, not even a timer. And on newer iOS versions, I like to swipe on my lock screen to get to the camera, but on the older iPhone, you had to unlock the device, locate the camera app, and then open it. Boy, we're really spoiled nowadays. Anyway, let's go ahead and shoot some photos. Since the first gen iPhone uses a 2 megapixel sensor, all its photos will render smaller. So keep that in mind as you're watching this video on your 128 inch 8K television in your man cave. First thing I noticed is the fuzziness of the 2G pic. And like I mentioned earlier, I found it hard to focus on close up objects and tap to focus wasn't a feature yet on this model. I tried moving to different distances, but had little luck. But keep in mind, Auto macro also wasn't a feature until the iPhone 3GS, so close-ups will be a challenge. That aside, you'll notice on the lamp a significant difference when it comes to the bokeh, or the bokeh, if you're that kind of person. In the first gen photo, we don't get much shallowness at all, but we get plenty with the iPhone 11 Pro. Keep in mind, this is without portrait mode enabled, by the way, so this is completely done optically. There's also more noise in the first gen photo, probably because the ISO is cranking up to compensate for the low light. Also, the noise in the first gen photo looks more colored and a little messy, but the iPhone 11 Pro's noise looks more clean, and the sharp foreground details are preserved. Let's do a dynamic range test. Both of these look all right, but in the first gen photo, you'll see our highlights clip, whereas in the iPhone 11 Pro photo, the details in the wall and the light fixture are preserved. In this low light scenario, the first gen held up decently, actually, but like the last photo, the blacks look more crushed. And again, it was harder to focus on the foreground, but overall it performed better than I expected. Now if we take a look at sharpness, details in the wood appeared a little splotchy in the first gen photo, but overall the image does also look underexposed. Again, it's all automatic settings, so I had no control over the exposure and the focus is fixed. In the 11 Pro photo, exposures are balanced and the sharpness is preserved. I'm no computer scientist, but I believe some of that sharpness preservation is helped made possible by Deep Fusion, a photo feature in iOS. The background is also shallow, which I think looks prettier, and it's difficult to achieve that on the first gen because of the optics. There's many factors that affect the shallowness of a photograph, but in the original iPhone, the wider lens and the smaller aperture are some of those main reasons as to why we can't achieve the shallow look. Regarding color, the first gen's color looks nearly identical to the 11 Pro. The big differences, again, are in the highlights and shadows. Also, I noticed more shutter lag in the first gen photos too. The exposure time metadata isn't present in any of the files I lifted from the phone, but just from a visual standpoint, it looks like the shutter is slower than in the 11 Pro pics. 
But because the first gen doesn't have all of the computational photography tricks and more advanced optics and sensors that are in the 11 Pro, it has to fall back on settings like a longer exposure time to get more light into the photo. But the longer you expose, the more streaking you can get with shutter lag. Now, there's no front-facing camera on the OG iPhone, so what the heck did people do before we had the modern-day selfie? Do you remember? That's right, we used a bathroom mirror. Okay, so my particular full body mirror isn't in a bathroom, but that aside, unsurprisingly, the skin tones look more true to life on the 11 Pro. And again, this is probably due to a lot of the computational secrets behind the phone, but this is also because the noise is more colored in the first gen photo, which interferes with that nice skin look. Also, just in case JJ Abrams is watching, this is how lens flares compare. So do with that what you will. And I would also love to compare video recording capabilities, but the original iPhone didn't have a video camera, so we'll have to skip that. Today, I believe a lot of us take technology and features for granted because things change a lot. So it's kind of humbling to use an older device just to see what kind of features we had back then. So I encourage you do that every so often. And like I say, especially when it comes to photography, it's the skills, not the tools. You can still take great photos with something like this. Because in the end, the best camera is the one you have with you. Thanks for sticking with me, catch the crazy, and pass it on. Yeah.